Hi guys, this is GKCS. We are talking about fast exponentiation today and specifically what we are trying to say is you have a number A raised to the power n and what you are trying to get is B. So, of course the most brute force way to do this is to take A, multiply it with A itself n times till you get the result. So, this is a slow approach which is order n time complexity that's a little too slow and usually in contests you're looking for much better than this. So what's our first idea? Well, you have this entire expression. Why not divide and conquer? Why not break it into parts and recursively solve? So you have this a into a into so on and so forth n by two times into this is the merging operation a into a into again so on and so forth n by 2 times. Now here of course I'm assuming that n is an even number and so I could divide it perfectly into 2. We'll have a look at uh, what happens if n is odd. So this is equal to p. What do we see here? We see that this expression is exactly the same as this expression. So if you can calculate for this part, you never need to touch this part. You can just, if, if this part evaluates to r which is result, all you need to do is multiply that with r itself without evaluating this expression and you get b. What happens if n is odd? Well, if n is odd, then you would have an extra a over here. You would have an extra a and you could take the floor of n by 2. So that would be the floor of n by 2. Right? What can we do about this? Well, we have the expression evaluating to result r. We have this evaluating to r. So why don't we just multiply both of them with a to get b. That still saves a, saves a lot of computation. That saves around, what, n by 2 computations. Right? And why are we stopping here? We can take r itself, which is equal to a into a into a, so on and so forth, n by 2 times and break that into two components of n by 4. The way we are going to break of course is very similar to how we broke here. If it's even then we just multiply both results. If it's odd then we multiply it with a, both results with a. And so that is equal to r. This we can say evaluates to x and so on and so forth. So what is the base condition? If n raised to the power whatever we are dividing it by, which is 2 raised to the power, uh, let's say e, is equal to 1, then we know that there is a single element remaining, which is equal to a. So that would mean that f of this number is equal to a. And what if there are no elements remaining? Well, f of 0 is equal to 1. So that's the way we are going to be working this problem out. Let's write some code for this. So now let's have a look at the code. We have power which takes this base a and an exponent n. What happens if a raised to the power 0 is given to us? That would mean n is equal to 0. So we should return 1 because anything raised to power 0 is 1. Secondly, if a raised to power 1 comes in, that is equal to a itself. So that's what we are doing over here. If n is equal to 1, then we return a. Simple base conditions done. Let's go for the recursive part now. That will be in this block over here. So int r is being assigned the power of a comma n by 2. So a raised to the power n by 2 is what will be stored in R. What is a raised to the power n? a raised to the power n is nothing but R into R. If n is even, so if n is even, then you have R into R and that will be returned. So recursively it will go on doing this, uh, you know, it will solve the problem till it gets to these base conditions. But if n is odd, then like we discussed, we have missed out on a particular a which was coming in between. 
So what we need to do is a raised power n then is equal to r into a into r, which is what we have done here. So this entire function, this simple function, will actually uh, reduce the time complexity that you have from order n, which was earlier. We, we were doing a brute force approach of order n to something much, much better. So let's analyze that. So let's understand the time complexity. We have a raised to power n, which is initially, so you pass in the parameters a and n to this function, and it will be broken into two subparts of a comma n by 2 and a comma n by 2. So you see that over here. Everything in blue needs to be computed. Everything in red will never be computed because it's already been done with the blue branch. Okay, and the blue branches represent this line over here. Now, a raised to power n by 2 breaks into two subparts itself, which is a raised to power n by 4 and a raised to power n by 4 and so on and so forth till you hit a raised to power 1. So what do we have? a raised to power 1 will give us a base condition return a and that time we will return to the parent. When you are at parent you come here, this, this has now been computed and you come here or here you do a single computation, a single multiplication which is constant multiplications basically so that is order 1 to return your result to your own parent which is somewhere over here and so on and so forth. So up to the point that we have n by 2 raised to the power x equal to 1 we go on branching. At this point n by 2 raised to the power x is equal to 1 for some integer x. So let's find out what x is. n is equal to 2 raised to the power x which gives us uh, you take the log over here, so log of n base 2 is equal to x. That's the result we have. So we are doing order log n operations. Alright, so with order log n branching and order log n merging, we are getting the entire result of a raised to power n because the results will be propagated at the parent in this much time. So your original answer, your brute force answer used to take order n operations and we have brought it down to order log n. So this result is actually very significant because if you have n equal to 10 raised to power 12, that means that you will take about 10 raised to power 12 into every computer can make about 10 raised to power 8 computations per second. So that is 10 raised to the power 4 seconds, 10,000 seconds for this kind of number. On the other hand, with log n operations to do, uh, you require about 40 computations, that's all. 40 upon this is in microseconds. So that's how big the difference is uh, if you choose a good algorithm. Finally, what we are going to look at is taking this number and actually uh, finding the remainder of it with a number. So B mod M is what we are looking for. So that in turn is equal to A raised to the power N mod M. How do you evaluate this expression efficiently? The previous example that we looked at was a little contrived because if you are multiplying a number by itself, lots and lots of times, then you are going to uh, exceed the integer limit very fast. So let's say you have a equal to 6 and you multiply 6 with itself 10 times. So that will be 6 raised to the power 10. So this is equal to about, yeah, let, let's just go for something simpler. Let's go for 8. 8 raised to the power 10 is what we need to calculate because n is equal to 10. So this is 2 raised to the power 3 raised to the power 10, which is 2 raised to the power 30, which is around 1 billion. So you see that for small numbers, 8 and 10, we are getting really big values. And what if we uh, double both? So this becomes 16, this becomes 20, 
16 raised to the power 20 is what we need. That's equal to 2 raised to the power 4 raised to the power 20, which is 2 raised to the power 80. Now this number will not even fit in long. So the long data type having 64 bits. 64 bits, yeah, I'm going to store something like 2 raised to the power 64. So yeah, even for seemingly small values, we can easily hit the integer limit. So what we really need to do is look at those questions which have a modulo operation in them. That's when you can actually use fast exponentiation uh, more often than not. And the first thing we need to prove is that our original expression a raised to power n mod n is equal to a raised to power n by 2 mod n into a raised to power n by 2 mod n mod n of the entire thing and these two expressions should be equal so that's what this condition should hold for us to do some fancy trickery later on so let's try and prove that firstly let's simplify the expression let's say uh, this a raised to the power n by 2 is equal to some p so what we have now is p mod m into p mod n should be equal to okay yeah mod with n outside too this should be equal to a raised to the power n is equal to p square so p square mod m that's all that we need to prove so let's find out what p is in terms of m p can be defined in terms of n this way, p is equal to for some constant a. No, let's not let's not have a. Let's have uh, the quotient with n plus remainder. That's what p is. Let's use that. So the left hand side expression is m q plus r mod n into m q plus r mod m mod m of the entire thing. What does that tell us? Well, this term is divisible by n. The remainder with n should be equal to 0. So this term should be equal to 0. Similarly with this term. So uh, now what we have is this is equal to r mod m into r mod m mod m. r is less than n. Okay, so actually taking the remainder with m is not going to help you. Because if r was greater than m, then you could have put that in the quotient itself. It would have come in the quotient itself. So mod m is not going to be taken into consideration. What we have is r square mod m. Alright, and we are nearly there now. So this is equal to r square mod m. So let's store that. Let's say r square mod m equal to LHS. Now let's take the right hand side. The right hand side is p square mod m. That tells us that p was equal to uh, mq plus r. So mq plus r, the whole square mod m is equal to m square q square plus r square plus 2 m q r this is just an identity of whole square uh, mod m this term is divisible by n so its remainder with n is going to be 0 so this is 0 this term is divisible by n again you have n here so it's divisible by n and remainder 0. So all you have remaining is r square and you can probably see it now r square mod n is what you have here. This is your RHS, this is your LHS and like a true engineer we have solved LHS equal to RHS so uh, this identity holds. These two are equivalent. Now the code has changed slightly. Uh, we have the power function a n which is going to give you a raised to power n mod n. So if n is even we do the same thing except that we also mod with n 
for every result right because we proved it right now that that is equivalent and then mod the entire multiplication with m again otherwise if it's odd then we have an extra a which is over here and the same thing happens we just mod it with m in the end finally you have a raised to the power n mod m in just log n steps All right so that's it for fast exponentiation you could extend this to matrices also you can have this number a and that could be a matrix and the same thing will work so uh, modding with m is also fine if you're modding with every element of it and uh, this comes up often in programming contests so it's a useful thing to know about I'll be sharing some code and relevant links in the description below. If you have any doubts or comments, please leave them below. I'll be looking at them soon enough. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next.